just welcome them with a some applause. <laughs> <coughs> okay, uh, and again, hello from us. This is uh, Kai Schubert, and my name is uh, Christoph Brüning. As we are already um, happen to be announced, we are going to um, give a lecture about um, the thing, the project we started, which is called Privacy Workshops. Um, <coughs> it, oh, no, just a few words about us. Uh, both of us um, are um, more or less. Um, involved in jobs where we can educate. Uh, maybe you want to introduce yourself, Kai? Okay, thank you, Christoph. Yeah, my name is Kai Schubert. I'm working as a research assistant at the University of Siegen, working there on different projects, uh, and for instance, at one in, in, in elementary school. That means I'm very often involved in work with school kids, really young school kids, and on the other side, I'm working, of course, with uh, different students at our university. So. That's why we are working, of course, and teaching a lot of <coughs> with young people. And uh, Christoph, maybe you explain yes. what's about your background. Okay. I'm basically a student teacher, with, uh, which means like in, in one and a half year, I have my second final exam. Yes, my second final exam, this is in Germany. Uh, and after that, I hopefully become a, a full teacher. And I'm teaching uh, the classes in German and philosophy. So, um, what are you going to hear from us now? Okay. <coughs> These are our contents. First of all, we'd like to um, uh, say a bit about how, uh, about what we did already and uh, where the idea came from and why we did that. And then we'd like to introduce you how we communicate the value of privacy to students, how we made those hand-on sessions and explain them, like how a true group works or uh, other things. And as our last point, I'd like to um, <coughs> uh, introduce to you what we want from you, actually, because there we not just uh, want to present our project, but we want others to, enjoy, uh, to join us. So that's basically what we want. Okay, next slide. Um, about the idea. Uh, we happen to start as a, a local group in Siegen uh, of the German... Um, What's it called? The German, the German Working Group on Data Retention. And we made a lot of um, uh, happenings in the street. We participated on demonstrations. We made uh, like uh, art uh, stuff where we created a big um, false camera and moved around and scared the hell out of little children and passengers. <coughs> but then we moved on and said, okay, it's fine. Arts are fine. Uh, Art stuff is fine uh, and participate in demonstration is fine, but it's not enough uh, because we're not raising any knowledge by that. And that's uh, how we created the idea of working with students uh, because uh, the young generation is the, uh, are the most people, or are the, uh, um, from the gen young generation, they're the most people who are in the net. It's not the old ones. Uh, who know how to value privacy, but the younger ones who doesn't uh, seem to, to handle it right like we feel it is right. So, <coughs> first of all, uh, you may ask you, how do you get students to listen to you? As, uh, I'm a student teacher, so um, uh, it's for me very, very easy to get students to listen to me because they have to. They just have to. Yes? <coughs> okay. <laughs> but maybe for you asking yourself, um, how you choose. And the first thing, if you want to uh, get in contact with uh, students, is like just find a teacher because uh, you, you hackers, you got uh, skills with computers, you, got, uh, you, you see systems and you see the flaws in the systems and uh, the failures in the systems, uh, and teachers don't. But most of you, as um, <coughs> I, I would think, cannot handle uh, a, a larger group of small children, but teachers can. So it's um, a win-win situation, as I didn't want to say it, but now I happen to. Um, okay, next slide. Um, and when you have the students, the next thing you have to do is to confirm them. It's all about concernment. Um, <coughs> because, um, sorry. We, we happened, we better made a, a signal. <laughs> okay, next slide. Okay, because if you are in the age of 10 and 16, everybody beyond that age is old or dumb. 
The younger ones are dumb and the older ones are just old. And that's the sole reason why young students don't listen to old people when they say, privacy is a good thing, please concern about your privacy, please think about your privacy. You're just too old for them to say anything that uh, are reasonable for them in any way, as they might think of it or find it. So, do we have any chance at all? And yes, we have, we have a chance. The only thing you have to do is get a list of the students you want to talk to or you want to deal with and print out their social network profiles. Print out all the pictures you can find of them on the internet. Print them out and hang them around the classroom. Like, make a, make a nice vernissage of their privacy. Or what they think, what their privacy is. And <coughs> from then on, it's basically a self-working thing. I did that before. Uh, a teacher, uh, a colleague of mine asked me if I can uh, do a talk to his students and, and what I did was asking him for the list and he said, why, why the list? And I said, I need their names and the profiles to print them out. And I made a nice vernissage in their own classroom when they weren't in. The next day they entered the classroom, they did it the same time with me and I was completely quiet. I sat there and just was smiling to them. And they entered the room and after like 20 or 40 seconds they saw the pictures and the profiles and they began to laugh. Oh, 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 oh my own profile. <laughs> what a laugh to see my privacy fear here. Uh, fear here. And <clears throat> I did nothing, I just smiled at them. And after a while, they saw the picture. They saw the pictures drinking and in bikinis. And uh, uh, the 13 years old girl saw the pictures of posing uh, and so on and so on. Um, and I still step, uh, um, kept quiet. And after like four or five minutes, and you need uh, to, to hold uh, the, that time uh, to get the students their self quiet, uh, they begin to look at me and I simply ask, what do you think the teachers reacted as I did that when you saw at the teacher's lounge earlier? <laughs> and their faces went like, what? <laughs> I was like, yes, all the teachers saw you drinking, Sonia, yeah. Or Tobias, <clears throat> as you were smoking where it wasn't allowed, yes, we were all seeing it. And after that, after you concerned them, after they realized you're old, but somehow you knew something, they, or you know something, they, they didn't before, and you can fiddle with it, after that, you can talk to them. <coughs> okay, yeah, and then you can communicate the need of privacy. Okay, next one. Um, <coughs> You can't ask them. After that, after you concern them, after they realize that what they formerly uh, feared, like a private uh, fear, a social network, isn't because it is public and I can download it with a fake account, um, you can ask them, do we need of the privacy, that ancient bastard at all? And yes, there, there is some part in our lives where we actually want a private fear, where we don't want to be it in public, where we don't want to see it printed out in the teacher's lounge. <laughs> okay. Um, mm -hmm. yeah. <clears throat> the next thing you have to uh, make clear to the students is that they grasp the internet as a vast marketplace. And from here, I'll just click it on my own, I think. Hmm? Um, <clears throat> because uh, young students see the internet and especially social networks at the private sphere because they intend to upload information, data and photos to share it with their friends and not with the public. They don't get this point clear. Uh, so you have uh, the first step, you have to concern them, you have to print out their formerly uh, field private uh, social network profiles and made it into the public, into a public classroom and then <coughs> um, you can show them a picture like this. That they always remember the thing that the internet is a vast, a huge marketplace. Because uh, if you upload a picture of you drinking uh, or drunken in a social network, it can be uploaded, uh, downloaded by those of uh, who you want to request a job from, or by your teachers, or by your enemies, or by your whatever. And you, you wouldn't um, um, 
tell anyone to get drunk at high noon and to, to uh, wander around a huge marketplace yelling out all the names of the girls and boys you slept before with because you just won't do it on a marketplace and so if you don't do it at a marketplace don't do it in the internet because everything which you can upload can immediately and instantly be downloaded by <coughs> enemies uh, <laughs> no, no, by for former students <laughs> by former students or even enemies like the teachers <laughs> and <coughs> of course by your parents your parents can download this stuff. You have to make that clear to the students. <coughs> not everything, not every secret, what you have in mind, not every of your picture that you have on your, on your, on your computer is worth to be uploaded in a completely public sp space. And I, um, I'm sorry, I forgot to say something first. Uh, the way Kai and I are talking to you today is how we talk to the students. So I know for you it's not uh, uh, a totally new fact that the internet is a public space, but for m some students it is. And to give you just an idea of how you can talk to students, we like to uh, talk to you as students so that you can see life. And then you have to address especially the girls, because girls, like um, in the age of 8 to 13, upload pictures where they look completely older than they are. And uh, they, they uh, are experiencing their own uh, uh, female whatever, and try to pose with us, try to make pictures. Okay, this is okay, and it's fine, and it's normal for, for, um, uh, for, for good health, and uh, I'm, my, I'm missing... Uh, an English word. Uh, for good adults, adolescence. Is it the right English word? Adolescence. Okay. It's, it's completely normal to do those things, but you please don't upload these pictures because they can upload by anyone. <coughs> Choose wisely, completely wisely, what you want to upload in a public sphere. And that's another thing you have to make clear to students. Once you've uploaded it, it is gone. It is in the sphere. It is on the marketplace, in the huge marketplace where it can never uh, be taken back. Think of you. Think, think if, you had, if there's a picture of you, you, you actually might, uh, it's, it slipped in the internet and uh, you didn't understand the impact of that. Look at those pictures that <laughs> created <coughs> that created impact on people that maybe don't like to see uh, those things. But, but my King Zola is, is great. I, I really love it. <coughs> oh, this is another one. This is nice. This is ASCII Art Hitler. It's, it's, uh, it's reading. Uh, you've been just Hitlered. Yeah? Your doom is sealed. <laughs> but there is rescue when you send this Adolf to all your friends. <laughs> P.S. Otherwise, he's coming for you on his own. <coughs> there happen to be schools in Germany that have exchanged with Israel. And it's not quite the best thing you can do to upload this ASCII art on your profile or on your uh, colleagues' profiles when you want to attend this exchange. the internet at the West marketplace, everything what is said, upload, it's not just said and upload, but it's given to a public sphere. This is what people need, uh, students need to realize. And this is a question that students uh, raise and, and uh, give to me. And I actually uh, had one uh, student and she asked, but is it all evil? Would, would, you rec uh, would you suggest not to use the internet? And I said, no, 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 no. The internet is fine. It's, it's a place where we can meet, where we can uh, meet our peers, and where we can connect to each other, and where we can communicate. But we just have uh, to, to, um, to get clear that it's like a huge marketplace. Like I said before, you wouldn't actually uh, wandering around, drunken, on high noon, yelling out all the names of the people you slept before with in your life. Um, so don't do it in the internet, but you wouldn't suggest someone not to go to a marketplace at all, or not to connect uh, to peers at all, or not to communicate at all. So, so far, are there any questions? 
Yes. Wait, wait for the microphone. <coughs> Okay, uh, I would like to know how do I get uh, teachers interested in this? Because I happen to know a lot of uh, teacher students and I find it very hard to uh, inform them about privacy issues and get them interested. Yeah, normally it's, it's more easy than it if, uh, looks at the first sight. Uh, the best thing is that you have a teacher at friend. This, this makes it very easy uh, to, to complain to him what he made uh, wrong in his years before <laughs> and how you can help him. The next thing is if you have interested students, they know uh, quite a lot better than you maybe or than anyone else at a school how teachers fiddle around and uh, with which teacher you can play or not. To. Um, just ask students which uh, teacher uh, would be interested in such a project and they might give you the answer. <laughs> yes, um, <coughs> he said get the profiles of the teachers, yes. yes. <laughs> there happened to be not uh, a, a teacher social network so far, I think. There is, there, yeah, there is, is? a kind of. There is a kind of? Okay. Not a Maybe I already have a fake account in that point, I don't know it already. <laughs> so, from here on, it's Kai's turn. Thank you, Christoph. So, I'm going to do, explain to you some things about hands-on, what we're going to do in practical, in practice with the students and the kids. And first, something about general setting and organization. Of course, good idea to have a school with equipped computer rooms and stuff like this, but it's not as necessary. You can also do it in another place, like a youngsters club or something like this. And it is very important that do you do your things with a real practical part of it. It means you do hands-on things, it means you do end at the computer and you're also doing com things without the computer. It means in the best situation you have a huge room where you have on one side a lot of computers where you can do practical stuff and on the other side you got a, for instance, a large table where you can sit and have y your short input dis uh, talks and discussions with the students. That means you're not always sitting at a computer, that's very important. And of course, what's very helpful that these kids bring their own stuff. Of course, not everyone has a laptop, but mostly nowadays everyone has a USB drive or a USB thumb drive, as you can see. And just announced them before, please bring your own stuff. We will use it during the, uh, during the workshop. And it's on the other side very helpful if some of you in your group is not as old as maybe two or <laughs> three two. It's maybe easier <laughs> if you find some, for instance, teenagers in your, uh, in your group that are also uh, kids at the school or in this age. For instance, we've got two younger participants in our group and they are much, so to say, for them it's much easier to explain what is going on in the social network services and to explain at the beginning about the settings and so on. Those about the general setting, not all, but the most important ones. And now what about explaining technical details? It's, I'll just show you later on some examples. Uh, for most of us here, of course, we know about these things, encryption and whatever. But for most teenagers, it's, I don't know what about, I don't care. And that's why it's very helpful to explain it, of course, as easy as possible, but not more, even uh, not too easy, of course, and explain it with comparisons to the real world. And uh, later on, I will show you some examples of this. For instance, that you can protect your own data with mainly three different in three different styles or three different kinds. The first is, as you can see, you have something, and in the real world, you got a key to enter your house, a room, whatever. The second opportunity is that you know something, just explain them that you need, for instance, for social network services, a password, or for instance, at a bank, uh, you need your, and a cash machine and an ATM, you need your uh, four digit PIN number. And of course, at least you are someone with biometrical uh, data. Of course, good idea to explain them 
It's not a good idea to use this kind of security because most of us know it doesn't work at all at the moment. So just explain them, and this is the most important. Knowing something is important, and it is knowing that this password you're using for the most of the social network services must be secure. And here are some examples. First of all, we, we've done some settings in social network services. That means two of our colleagues that are younger than us explaining them by detail at the computer while the students are doing the same at their own computers. What about settings in those services like Schulercc, Facebook, and whatever? For instance, switching off that everyone can sh uh, see your pictures or other, any other stuff. And after this turnaround, or maybe it's, it's a good idea to, to, to not do it only in one of those social network services. Maybe you do it in two or three of the most important ones. At the beginning, of course, it's a good idea to know about what they are using. And in Germany, for school kids, it's mostly Schulercc and SchülerVZ and other uh, uh, services. And then you're deciding two or three of them and then just go on the setting page and just explain them all these parts, what it is about and what does it mean if I switch this on or off or select different settings. As I said before, good idea to speak about secure passwords. And of course, most of them are using just those four, five, six digits and not a good idea. Then explain them this really easy opportunity to remember a hard and a tough password. If you remember just a sentence and using the first letters like, I don't like to remember passwords and using this ID and so on, um, is much better than your own name or something like this. And then tr force them to, um, to, to, to think about a, 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 a new password and uh, to create a new password. And later on, and this is very important, you use it, this pa you're using this password for changing it or the social network services or using it at the last part that we are also going to do for data encryption. We have shown those uh, kids how to cre create uh, TrueCrypt containers on an USB thumb drive. You can do also a lot of other stuff, but in our opinion, most of this encryption software is not that usable and uh, TrueCrypt is one of those that is, in our opinion, most easiest one and of course with a lot of, a lot of other advantages. <laughs> and that's why a good idea, the password that they have created before, uh, to use it directly in the next step. That means they bring their own thumb drive, you are installing um, TrueCrypt on their laptops or you install it on the computer schools, uh, c computers. And after that, you create a container on a USB drive and explain them how it works and how to use this. And if they know that this container, the data that is contained in this uh, container are really protected and even a teacher is not in a, uh, in a possibility to read this stuff, they are really interested in. Especially if they're saving this <coughs> stuff also on not a storage network um, drives uh, where normally we the computer administrator of the school has also access to. If they know even the administrator can't read it, they're really interested in. So, <laughs> at the end, um, after the hands on, we just want some things from you. We give you some information and what we want from you is, first of all, join us enlightening school kids, teenagers and students about privacy and how to take care of this. Yeah, we actually need, need all of you to, to join us because it happened to be that at a school there are 60 teachers and normally 600 school kids and or about those 60 teachers and where like three or four understands the things, one has a time and the other is interested in doing something more than he already does. So please, please help us in enlightening more and more. You already, you already have the knowledge, you just uh, need to find a teacher. He got the didactic skills, you got the knowledge. It's totally fine, but please, please join us. So, and as Christoph is speaking about teachers, <laughs> China's enlightening teachers first. That's important. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> definitely is. I have worked with them. It definitely is. So, what we're also interested in, tell us about your experiences. If you're, for instance, doing something similar or what are you about your experiences at schools. And 
of course, uh, we already started creating teaching materials and we are always interested in, in improving it and by doing this with your support will be a good, great idea. So at the end, are there any questions? Um, two suggestions. Uh, the first one you said, uh, pupils uh, should bring their own stuff. There are pupils who can't, who don't have any. You should provide something for them. Um, the second one is, uh, why don't you contact the local Erfahrkreise or CC clubs? There are sometimes pupils in the age of these kids um, who can inform them about these things. Um, and I think uh, they will take them serious because they're the same age. Uh, for the first question, um, yes, of course, it's important that, uh, that, you pr uh, that you also got some stuff, for instance, at the school, not everyone can bring his own one. This is this that we have done. And I guess m it's mostly possible to have some laptops prepared, and at, in our case, it never wasn't a problem at all. Yeah, and at our last privacy workshop, we had 10 USB pen drives with us for those who can't afford a own. Yeah, and for instance, USB thumb drives nowadays, for instance, to have a kind of an attraction or so, you can buy 10 for some oil or somewhere and just give them away at the end. Also a good idea, and it's no more that expensive than before. And about the second question, if you wanted to add something about uh, Alpha and CCC. Local yeah, places. the problem with Alpha and CCC crabs in Siegen is there are no one. <laughs> <laughs> we are the only one who knows who are actually doing anything in this um, field. And uh, <coughs> yes, you, you can ask Alpha Crisis uh, and, and hacker groups to enlighten students, but uh, the thing is, when and where? The good thing about making those things at school is that uh, you have a, a place, uh, a, a PC pool, like my school happens to have an uh, completely new uh, PC pool with friendly light and colors <laughs> where you actually uh, like to be in. And so we had the room. The next thing is uh, when uh, this is, you have to organize like uh, 10 to 14 students at the same time somewhere. This is not easy uh, when you try to do this without school. We tried it, uh, we, we uh, sent invitations to nearly f uh, all the 40 schools around Siegen uh, and invited uh, as many students as possible to come and actually uh, I show you with my fingers the number of, of, of students come, zero, except three uh, good friends of a colleague of us. So this is the thing, when you, when you do it at school, uh, you have a teacher who can actually force the students to their luck. Yeah? Okay, <coughs> if you don't want to lose your, your grades, please come to us at Saturdays. Uh, yes, we can do it. Why don't you invite uh, these people to the school uh, at the time you teach them? Should be possible. Which people, the students or uh, African students? Students. Yeah, okay, uh, sure, sure, you can do this. It's, it's always a good idea to have more knowledge around, but we actually happen, mm, there is none. There are no. Okay, next question. Yeah. <coughs> Two ideas. One is in order to get all the teachers, you need to get to the computer science teachers. So if you teach the, you know, get the computer science teachers interested in, in showing how these things work, they will tend to bring it into their schools with things that they do. As a card carrying mother of a teenager, uh, I just have another idea of how you can be getting to them. Uh, I had put up a picture of my son many, many years ago when he was cute, uh, sort of half naked. And it was on Google, of course. It was Googleable. And I'm seeing many, many parents putting up pictures of their kids when they're mm -hmm. small. And uh, when one of his friends discovered this, Googling his name, it was, of course, utterly embarrassing. And we had to go to a lot of trouble to find a human being at Google to get rid of this picture. Um, so um, it, it might be a good idea to also not just look at their own profiles, but see if you can find out their parents. Do their parents have Facebook, Flickr accounts, and have everything public so that it's possible to get one or two choice pictures of them uh, being little kids, and maybe that will also help them to embarrass them enough to say, oh, we've got to do something about this, and have a nice fight with their parents, <laughs> explaining <coughs> fights with their parents. This is a very, very good idea, and we, we did uh, some, something li like that in a bit uh, at our last privacy workshop. We, we made a contest, uh, Google one of us. Hmm. 
<coughs> and, and we uh, sought out a prize, uh, some chocolate stuff to get them uh, uh, for, for the one who could find uh, the most information about one of our members. And uh, it, it came out that they were uh, nearly astonished that you can uh, uh, make a complete trace of a year of some person just by the pictures he, he uploaded, where he has been, uh, who he has talked to, and, and so on. This is a very good idea. Thank you. Yeah, my name is Rainer Glück. I'm from CCC Hamburg. We uh, <coughs> um, have a similar project, and we attended an Easter egg before. So yes, yeah. yeah. Um, I just want to point out the, um, uh, the matter of uh, getting 14 students in one room at a time they don't uh, they don't want it to, or they um, they normally have leisure at this place. Um, that's easy. Um, don't talk to the students, talk to the teachers and ask if it's part of their normal uh, subjects, of their normal uh, lessons. And so uh, the students will be there because they are forced to, and they are happy because they don't have a uh, boring teacher in front of them, but uh, something they don't have to write, they just have to listen and that's all. So um, that's quite another atmosphere in the room, and it's not, um, it has not the bad taste of something Wow, what a, when does it end? Um, I wanted to be at home and the sun's shining and now it's uh, late. <laughs> well, um, yes, yes, that's completely right. Uh, the best thing you can do is uh, to, to tell the teacher, uh, tell me how to educate them, but please then go, 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 just go. Uh, as, as I did it, uh, the last time we made a privacy workshop, it was with my own students and I tried uh, to be the most, uh, less time in the front. I tried to stay mostly behind, 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 so that they c c just uh, even couldn't see me at all. Uh, because it would be like the normal teacher-student situation otherwise. So this is also a good point. Any further questions? Do the schools accept you? I mean, don't they say it's some kind of weird political party, so we don't want them to indoctrinate our students? I saw that one of your workshops in Karlsruhe is in the view of the Linke, which is a political party. So the school workshop shouldn't take place there. Yeah, this is, uh, uh, in, in German, it's, uh, it's law that you have to uh, stay out at school with any political stuff, any party-related stuff. So if you do this, uh, and you can't find a place uh, at the school, uh, try to find a place uh, that's neutral, that's uh, as neutral as, as possible. And if you come from a party, try not to make that clear. Try to make that clear uh, to what the teachers and the principal of that school, but not uh, uh, like to overwhelm those students with, uh, <coughs> we uh, from that, that party brought you this wonderful uh, privacy workshop. That's, you, you have to stay there very neutral because it's uh, law in general. And of course, it's, it's, uh, it's um, better for the students not to make, uh, uh, to overwhelm them with, with, with some, others, some other ideas. Like, uh, because they get bored. Ah, we want to sell us something. It's like this old thing. You mentioned that you, you're not aware of anyone doing anything else like this here in Germany. Are you, um, I know I've read about something similar in, I think it was either the UK or America, inspired by um, a book called Little Brother, where students, did, uh, where the teachers did workshops very similar sounding to yours. Are you aware of other international movements in this or? or um, no. At the moment, no. That's, uh, that's pretty full, I know. But maybe we can talk later on so that you can give me the names so that I can uh, try to get contact. <laughs> Any questions? Yes? It's mine. Um, well, you talked about that um, cool stuff of um, Facebook and so on. Um, is there any opportunity for us to get into that thing without um, around um, our own account? Yes, like you can use trash mailers. 
like uh, I always use yopmail.com because they uh, export the inbox as an RSS feed and <coughs> all of my fake accounts are, are made with those trash mail addresses so that I can uh, don't, don't have to waste my own. Any last question perhaps? Okay, do we want to go? Okay, no, there is. Okay. Okay, this is more like a remark, uh, some experience we had at a university uh, in Bremen where they introduced like these small cards. Uh, you buy everything, you know, every, every meal you buy, you buy with these cards and so on. And, and there were some students sitting there like, uh, uh, well, okay, we don't like them, but they get now rid of all the cash stuff, so we use them. And they got the idea to actually go and ask, okay, whatever, what, what do you have stored from, on, of my data due to these cards? And they got the printout. It was like, uh, they just had it for three months and it was like uh, 30 pages of stuff. Every meal they ate, everything they <coughs> had, it was stored on there. So it works also in other places. It's always a good idea to get the, the people, the idea, you know, look for the data that is stored about you somewhere. Yeah, that's, that's, that's right. You can do this with basically all kind of stuff. It doesn't have to be uh, like uh, uh, RFID data, data chips builds or uh, social network profiles. You can use anything that concerns them because uh, like most of, of those ideas and concepts like privacy and data protection are very, very abstract and even hard to... Uh, um, to, to describe in very s simple words. Like, uh, it took me about 20 hours to find pictures that expresses uh, those pictures. I need, to, uh, like, how many, like 20, 20 or 4 hours we need just uh, to, to find these pictures. And it's very, very hard to put abstract concepts into understandable words. So the easiest thing is to concern them, present them the bill, present them the social network profiles, prof profiles, present them anything that they will be concerned about it. And then they think, oh, I didn't expect or want that. Uh, just to add, I also think it's a really good idea to, to try to visualize those massive kind of media on data you're creating every day uh, using just any kind of modern digital technology. For instance, printing out is a really good one, but you can do this also in other ways. And I think not, e not also for, for school kids and teenagers, it's an interesting or important idea to do so. If you wanted to engage people uh, to, to care about their privacy, do it with, with other stuff like, like other social network services for parents and stuff like this. Yeah, you can actually, uh, um, a small bell, take a small bell with you, uh, which you ring it every time someone loses uh, his data. And so you can go around with some ping, 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 you lost already, you lost already, you lost already another private data of you. Yeah, for instance, one thing we've done at the beginning of our uh, group in Siegen was to, to uh, just to print out uh, some piece of, uh, small pieces of paper where the information was signed, like a uh, telephone call from person A to person B on this and this date, talking about this and that, and just take this and leave it on the floor in a city center and to, to explain to people how often and how quickly they are losing their data and, and not losing or they're creating data that what someone later on can be used. Can yeah, be used. you can uh, see one of our pictures. Um, um, we have them in a moment. Um, I get on my personal web page, uh, which is christoph.de, but Christoph is two C's in the front, so C Christoph.de. Uh, I actually uh, linked uh, to my uh, um, pictures on uh, 23.hq.com. Yeah, okay. Uh, there you can find some of our art stuff pictures uh, where we try to visualize uh, the loss of data or uh, those loss of privacy stuff things. End. Okay, <laughs> one more question. Do you also teach them? I know it's uh, mostly impossible how to get rid of this data if it's on the internet. There are some methods to get rid of it. Do you also teach them how to do this? Um, <coughs> uh, basically, uh, we, we explain them that you can contact admin administrators uh, and, oh yes, 
Yes, we did. I, I tried to explain them that if they uh, search hard enough, they can find pictures of me uh, 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 got drunk uh, when I was 16. And they all got excited because they were my students. And, <coughs> and I said, I tried to contact the administrator, but he didn't just react on my emails and, and my phone calls and did not uh, uh, erase those pictures. And by that, I tried to show them how uh, how hard it is to remove data from the internet because even, uh, and that's another point, even, yes, uh, one, one student asked me, she asked me, um, what's about if I just uh, take out the, uh, uh, that I just, uh, I yes, <coughs> okay, nice try, uh, with a mouse full of tongue, it's hard to speak. Um, I tried, no, actually, she asked me, so, like this. She asked me, uh, isn't, uh, didn't it just would be easy for me to remove the pictures from my social network profile so that you cannot get them anymore? And I said, yes, you could do that, with, uh, but I already have the um, pictures on my hard drive and on the starter storage uh, server of, of the school. And so they're gone. And is it a question? I'm not sure anymore, is it? Yeah. Answered? <laughs> Just to add, this is really important to, to tell people, of course, you got, um, in my opinion, really small or mi minimal opportunity to get it back, but in my opinion, it's the best idea to keep explaining that at the, be at the beginning, if it's on the internet, it's, it will be there forever. And if you're 16, you can't maybe imagine what is the result in about three, four years when you're joining a job or whatever. But you have to explain with that in normally, like Christoph's example sh has shown, it's not possible to get it out. Yeah, um, the, the human, there is a human psychologic range of like two weeks. Anything further than two weeks, we cannot imagine. If I would tell you, like, uh, uh, the, the Earth will explode in two years, you feel like, yes, I get two years left. But if I would tell you the Earth will explode in 25 minutes, you get concerned. And this is why, <laughs> maybe, maybe, that's like, where's my payback card? Where's my payback card? The Earth got destroyed. So um, the best thing is to concern students with things from their day-to-day -day life and from nowadays. You, you can use pictures uh, from, from earlier days, but it won't concern them as much if, if, you, if, if you use actual stuff. Okay, that was a question. Not so much a question. Um, um, <laughs> I hope you don't mind if I check this a little bit. Um, I just wanted to mention that there's another organization in Germany that's called Freiheitsredner. Uh, also in Austria soon, and uh, if you, the, these guys are do uh, stuff similar to the privacy workshop, and if you're all on your own and interested in helping, then uh, you can join us there. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, thank you. Um, the Liberty Speaker Network, as I'm part of it, oops, I better should have mentioned it. Uh, uh, we are, uh, as, uh, as he said, we are a network of like 20, no, no 70 people around Germany, uh, which you can ask to hold a talk, to uh, give a lecture, uh, give a workshop at any place, at a school, uh, uh, at, your, at your job, anywhere, at your, at your Christmas party, uh, about uh, data retention, about uh, surveillance laws, and so on and so on. Okay, are there any further questions? Okay, okay. that's the one. So you have to stay. <laughs> yeah. Do you have any idea why there is no initial interest in this privacy stuff or in this young generation? Um, <coughs> I, I thought about it quite a while. I think it's that they didn't grasp the internet. They think uh, the internet is a, a thing they can use uh, to share things with their friends. And they didn't, they, uh, most of the students I talked to, and I, 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 I talked with, with many students uh, for a very long time without giving them any hints of what I wanted to hear from them uh, to, to get uh, to know what, what they think about. And I. I um, think they uh, grasp it the way they intend it to use. They intend to use the internet as a medium to communicate just with their friends, 
So they think it's a sphere just for them and their friends, their peers. So they don't get it that it's a public area. And I think that's the, flaw in the most flaw in the plan. Hi. Uh, I'd like to add something completely legal. As far as I know, according to the Urheberrecht, copyright in Germany, um, some web poster of some web page whatsoever only has a right to post a picture of you where you clearly can be seen identified on this web page with your explicit consent. So if you guys uh, want some web poster to remove some picture of you, which got there somewhere how, they are obliged to do so, so you can even go after them legally if you want to do so, as far as I know. Yeah, that's, that's completely true, and that's why I chose the picture. That's why I chose the picture of the marketplace. You can go on high noon, drunk into the marketplace. I slept with, uh, I can't remember her name. And by later, you got your hangover and you feel sorry about the yelling out her name or his name or whatever. And so you, tr you go back to the marketplace and try to find every person who may be in audible reach to uh, have heard what you, what you said. And to go to him and say, please forget it, please forget it. You may miss one person or you actually couldn't find the, a, a person at all. And that's the best picture, I think, to describe this, this floor. You have the right to remove a picture that you don't want to have there. But at this time, it's already given. Anyone who has downloaded it may not want to publish it, but he has it on his own hard drive. So this is uh, why, I, 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 um, why we merely try to, to um, bring the students uh, to, to choose wisely what they upload, because once they uploaded this, and that's the thing, uh, that's the way you have to feel about it. It is a present given to a huge marketplace to everyone there, and you cannot control who are this one is talking with, or who are this guy uh, is, is talking with. Uh, you have um, yelled to him your PIN code, and he's maybe talking to him and to him anymore. You, you can't control it. Um, sorry. Um, but wouldn't it be better to teach the children also to not take photos of them drinking and smoking in the first place? Uh, sorry, I didn't catch the question. Wouldn't it be better to tell them to not take photos of them drinking and smoking in the first place? Yeah, but it just happens to be that uh, drinking and smoking at a, a certain age is prohibited, and so they do it, because it is prohibited. That's what the restrictions do, they do it. Yeah. Okay, if there aren't any more questions, we thank you very much for listening. Can you? And if you yeah. <laughs> <laughs> thank you for listening, and if you've got further questions, we are still here. And you have a look at our website and send us an email. Thank you very much.